Chapter 4, Creating Your Portfolio Game Plan. To begin with the end in mind means to start with a clear understanding of your destination. It means to know where you are going so that you better understand where you are now and so that the steps you take are always in the right direction. Stephen R. Covey. Okay, guys, so for chapter four, this is going to be kind of cool. I've invited special guest Kevin Claser, founder of REIC, to be here with us. Kevin, thanks for being here. No problem. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks, Kevin Claser. No, don't worry, Stephen. You, you get to be here as well because you're actually with us through the whole book. Don't worry. Well, you called him Kevin Claser. I did? Yeah, it's actually Kevin Clayson for those of you listening. Uh, son, Chris has only known me 12 years. You'd think he'd figure it out by now, but that's okay. Yeah, and the reason, Kevin, why I haven't decided to ask you to come into studio with me here today is because at REIC, what you do every day, all day long, is you run a division of people that are dedicated to creating game plans for people. So who better that I could have here in the system I've created than you that is implementing this with hundreds of people? And it's not just creating game plans. We're talking about personalized million dollar game plans. We're talking about the opportunity to sit down and look at you specifically and make it work for you. Okay, so here we go. No wealth creation system would be complete without a vision of the end goal. A game plan provides motivation when things are tough and discipline to turn away from temptation. For example, a person who invests in real estate without a clear plan, but with the hope of making money may do well on her first deal and then be tempted to use the profits to go buy a boat. Her standard of living may rise slightly by doing so, but her long-term financial security will actually decrease. To the successful, you need a structured and systematized approach to investing. This is achieved by constructing what we call a portfolio game plan. Now listen, a solid portfolio game plan in the straight pass system requires the following elements. There's three of them. One, you've got to know how to identify and leverage your hidden assets. Two, you need 10 years and a customized plan. And three, you need to endure to the end. Or in other words, stick with it. Now, identifying and leveraging your hidden assets. Let's talk about that first one. Russell Conwell, a minister and the founder of Temple University, once gave a lecture titled Acres of Diamonds. He related the story of an Arab man who wanted to become rich informed by an old priest that he would find diamonds in a river that runs through white sands between high mountains, the man sold his farm and set off on his quest to find diamonds. Years later, having found no diamonds, his money spent and his spirit defeated, he drowned himself in the sea. That's kind of depressing. Soon after, the man to whom he had sold his farm found the most magnificent diamond mine in all of history, of mankind. Investing for most Americans is quite similar. We want money so badly that we search high and low for people, resources, knowledge, strategies, and schemes. More often than not, we get burned. What few people realize is how many assets are readily available to them. These assets are hidden because of how we've been trained through the media and culture. Successful investors understand how to shift position and leverage assets that are hidden from or are underutilized by most individuals. So what we ultimately do is we realize that economic success comes from producing higher yields from existing resources, not necessarily needing to create new ones. So this is one of my favorite quotes. As the economist Jean Baptiste says, he wrote in a treatise on political economy, creating wealth is a function of moving assets from areas of low yield to areas of high yield. And let's just pause here for a second and go off the record because Kevin, when you look at what we do all day long. I mean, this is it when we're talking to people brand new that most Americans I meet, I know most Americans you probably meet, this is the problem. We actually have assets, uh, either assets of time, assets of credit, money, savings, sometimes equity in a home, but we've often not only got it in areas of low yield, usually often areas of negative yield. And you know, Chris, you've told people for years now that you can take anybody despite their situation and help them create something powerful in their lives to create financial results. This is the key to it right here. It is that every one of us has hidden assets, whether they're physical hidden assets or hidden assets, like you said, that maybe maybe it's our credit, maybe it's our time, maybe it's our relationships. Chris, when we leverage those and we put them into a game plan, we create wealth. Well, and one of the biggest assets I see underutilized, and this one isn't to be found in a bank account, but it's in your personal net worth. It's in the value of you, is that if people actually apply themselves to doing what they love and enjoy, 
that is one of the best ways to make the most money. Uh, MSNBC actually came out with uh, a statistic, 87% of all Americans don't even like what they do. And yet they wonder why financially we struggle. We go looking for money in all the wrong places where we've got zero passion. So getting back to this principle of Jean-Baptiste, this sounds simple conceptually, but applying it actually and practically requires a paradigm shift for most people. Why? Because our low yield assets, including home equity, 401ks, IRAs, and other qualified plans are our sacred cows of traditional retirement planning. And by sacred cow, I mean, we don't want to touch it. In the straight path system, we strongly recommend that our clients shift these low yield assets to areas of high yield, namely real estate investing. Now, when I first met Dave, he had a lot of money in his home, but not a lot of expandable, uh, expendable income. He had a goal to pay off his home. So we helped him put that goal on steroids. Using his home equity, we bought five investment properties, which have put him on track to create a half a million dollars in net profits in the next few years. He'll be able to pay off his home and still have more than $400,000 left to continue investing with. These are the kind of possibilities that open up when we shift assets from areas of low yield to areas of high yield. 401ks, IRAs, they're all similar. In a 30 year time frame, you're lucky to receive an eight, nine, 10% average rate of return. For most people, it's much less than that, especially when you factor in things like inflation. And doesn't 50% or more sound better than eight, nine, or 10%? I mean, I, I tell people all day long that 8% or 7% or 6% in a 401k, that's not an investment. That's a super risky bank account where you're just trying to outpace inflation a little bit. It's never really going to accumulate too much. My friend and client, Mark, was able to liquidate and leverage his 401k successfully. When we were creating his portfolio game plan, he was torn between using his home equity or his 401k. We decided to use the 401k because he was living month to month and refinancing his mortgage would have increased the monthly payment by several hundred dollars. Even though he knew that his new investment cash flow would offset the payment increase, he wanted to make sure he would be safe. He liquidated his 401k, bought two investment properties that together generated 650 per month of positive cash flow, and furthermore, those properties are more than likely going to yield him over $225,000 of net profits within the next four years. But what about taxes and what about penalties, you might be thinking? My perspective is that this is just a cost of doing business, not to mention the lost opportunity cost that must be factored in. It simply comes down to doing the math. I don't hesitate to pay relatively minor penalties and taxes when I know I can generate much higher and safer returns through real estate. Understand that I'm not being you know, flippant about your hard-earned money. I don't take financial losses lightly. In fact, this is precisely why I teach people to liquidate home equity and qualified plans as quickly as possible. I just know that there's a far better system than the 30 plus year you're in it for a long haul mindset. And furthermore, there are ways to defer penalties and taxes on qualified accounts through real, uh, through real estate investing anyway. I mean, guys, that's one of the things I love about this is often people aren't ever paying those taxes. They're not paying those, those penalties because there are ways around that. Now, this is all a perfect example of why developing the investor mindset is fundamental to the straight path system. It requires a recognition that traditional retirement uh, advice is flawed and obsolete, a belief that there are far better options and the knowledge to apply those options safely and sustainably. I don't want you to increase your risk. I want to help you decrease your risk. I want you to pay off your home. I don't want you to put your hard earned retirement funds in danger. I want you to maximize their returns. Wealth is created when we shift these assets to increase their productivity. Because guys, I'll just step off for a second. When I meet with clients uh, with this American mindset that most of us are given, when we're talking about the family business of you, there are two things you've got to bear in mind. One is you've, you've got to take your expenses and you've got to minimize them. You've got to control them. But at the same time, and by the way, we do a great job with that in our training. That's We play real small in life that way. Yet where we don't play big enough, is that the other, the other half of financial success is getting our money to produce. And you know what? Paying off your house, 401ks, that's not production. That's minimizing expenses. And you know what I've learned? You can never retire from eliminating all your expenses. You can only retire when you've actually been able to produce profits and residual incomes. So I urge you to think about the inherent risks of the traditional mindset. I sat down with the client today. This is kind of interesting. And they said, well, we're concerned about the risk of the system. We're very conservative people. And I looked them right in the face and I said, this is what's really weird. We live on the same planet, 
but you live in one world and I live in another. And in your world, you look at what I'm doing and you think I'm the one with all the risk. But you know what? I look into your world and I think you've taken on the greatest risk of all, not investing, not investing in you, not investing in your future. And that's what I see most people doing, trying to play it safe through accumulating your way to freedom and you just simply can't do it. One of my clients, Lance, actually, he's a financial planner. And though he's bombarded daily with investment opportunities, he rejects most of them because he readily recognizes that they're not financially sound. He's naturally a skeptical person, but when he researched the straight path system, he was absolutely astounded by how it revolutionized the real estate industry. He was further amazed with the results of his first property. He was able to purchase and control it for less than 15 grand, and he's now receiving a cash flow of over $600 per month which is really unheard of in traditional investments that he's involved with. He projects that he'll make $95,000 in the next two years, which would be a 317% annualized return. After experiencing this success, Lance now discusses straight path real estate with all his clients, and he's referred many of them to us. And he's convinced that this, that this system is far better and a safer opportunity than most traditional investment opportunities. Tangible assets such as cash and 401ks, you know what, they're relatively easy to identify. However, the two most common hidden assets are income and credit. Kevin, tell us what we mean about income and credit. It's a concept that if you have a job and you've had a job for, let's say, 24 months, you have some stability and you have some stability in your income and in your life. Look, when you're looking to go find money for investments, and maybe you're going to, we'll talk about this later, how you can uh, get some investments by leveraging some of the bank's resources. They're looking at your stability and your income, as well as your credit. If you have stability in your life, you have somebody that's willing to help you invest. Well, when I got started investing, I didn't have any money, but you know what I did had, have? I had a job and I had credit, and that's all I needed to start my financial recipe, my own 10-year game plan. I'm only eight years into it, but I needed a tablespoon of credit, one tablespoon of a job, plus a cup of time, and one cup of our system, and then pop it in the oven of, of repetition, and then I ended up with millions of dollars after baking it for a few years. Now, that's a little corny, I know, but it really is that simple for me when I sit down with people and look at their assets and create their plan. Now, my neighbor, Dwayne, he's an optometrist and having invested mostly in the stock market, he wanted to add real estate to his portfolio, especially after seeing me succeed. He approached me and we quickly found two properties for him. He's never set foot on one of the properties and yet today he earned $766 each month on them because of our partnership. He received down payments totaling 10 grand and enjoys $114,000 of combined equity. My friend Scott, he's another perfect example, actually a neighbor of mine. We, he was leveraging um, his, his income and his credit score, and he was heavily leveraged into the stock market. And so we got together and he considered real estate, and he partnered with my team, leveraged our experience, time, effort, ultimately our system. And today he's got $16,000 in his bank account from the transaction. He also has a positive cash flow of $739 a month, eighty thousand dollars of equity never set foot on the property another hidden asset though is also relationships and this is one that i think is one of the greatest secrets that doesn't get talked about you can partner with family members co-workers business partners friends you can partner with anyone except for maybe your pets that's not going to work out too well and through your partnerships you can actually get the rest of the resources you need in fact i sit down with people and let them know we're all connected in our sea of humanity to to everybody and so when I look at my closest five or 10 family members and friends, if I don't have a resource to do real estate, they do. And if it's a good system, we can partner and work together. And with that in mind, you know, we can accomplish anything that we want. Creative partnering is the real estate secret of almost all real estate gurus. This is how they accomplish so much in such a short amount of time. While I don't consider myself a guru, my story is similar in that regard. I've done plenty of real estate deals on my own, but I've done far more through partnerships. My father-in-law was my first partner, and after watching me succeed for a couple of years, he wanted to know what I was doing. I taught him the system. He wanted to be involved. I provided the know-how, the work, and he offered his money, credit, and job history, and together we've purchased 31 properties. The system I teach in this book is precisely what I've done to succeed. It's not theory or salesmanship. It's the compounded result of hundreds of actual real estate deals, most of which were executed through partnerships. Now, I want to drive this point home 
And, and so I want to help you understand how powerful this can be. Partnering is far more than something you should do if you don't have any other options. I encourage every investor to actively seek sound partnerships from the very beginning. It's one of the best forms of leverage and an excellent way to propel yourself forward much faster than you could go alone. We'll discuss this in greater detail in chapter eight. Straight path sign number one. Identify low-yield assets and leverage them by moving them to high-yield investments. Low-yield assets are often hidden and may include home equity, qualified plan funds, income, job history, credit history, relationships, and cash. This may require a paradigm shift. Achieve this and manage your risk through education. Now, one of the great things about the straight path system is that there are very few people who are unable to participate in it. Once hidden assets are understood and uncovered, it leaves people without an excuse to start investing. In fact, I don't know if you guys remember when I got started on my very first house, I remember I had a mentor come to my life and you know what? I didn't have the job history that I need. My credit wasn't really even established. I didn't have anything, no money, no nothing. And yet one of my first mentors, he put me on a path. He says, Chris, your credit needs to look like this. Your job history needs to look like that. 14 months later, I bought that first house. Seven years later is meant hundreds and hundreds of homes. And so, you know, did I do a lot my first year? No, I did technically nothing. My assets didn't grow at all. Wrong. I would actually argue that because I developed my credit, because I had a plan and because I developed my work history, that is ever so much as part, uh, an important part of my, my success as actually buying the houses and increasing the net worth. So I encourage you to look at that. Now, once again, these assets include, uh, um, include, but are not limited to home equity, retirement fund money and low yield risky accounts, income, work history, credit history, relationships, cash. Everyone can participate, even those with very little assets to begin with. In their case, it's just a matter of time. And Kevin, can you think of the last time you worked with a client that had virtually no assets, but through partnering was actually able to accomplish so much more than they other would have ever been able to do on their own? Absolutely. We've worked with a number of people that don't feel like they have any way to gain uh, some momentum in real estate. We sit down, we look at their hidden assets like relationships for partnerships, and guess what they do? They go buy real estate, and it's been powerful. Okay. Now let's talk about a customized 10 year game plan. Everyone I work with creates a 10 year game plan. If you're old, 10 years. You might only be at it three or four years. And if you're young, 10 years. That's the amount of time I just want to plant this expectation that real estate, it doesn't grow overnight. It takes some time and everyone needs a customized game plan to achieve their goal. Now, this plan always includes both beginning and end goals. The beginning goal is to uncover and transfer enough existing assets to purchase one home. Other people with more assets can begin purchasing multiple homes right out the gate. The end goal is to create enough cash and cash flow to be able to technically retire within 10 years, which is a realistic goal for every individual. When financed and positioned properly, investment properties create a chain reaction. The more you have, the more you're able to leverage. Kevin, you actually saw this unfold in your life because you and I got started, what, like three years ago now? Yeah. Just briefly share with us what you started with and where you're at today. My journey began as someone who was divorced, ugly, and balding, and 30 grand in debt. Today, I stand before you, still kind of ugly, still balding. That's true. That's married, true. That's true. Married to a gorgeous <laughs> woman and owning 25 properties, many of those free and clear, worth millions of dollars. See, when I got started, I didn't know what was available to me. I remember the conversation that Chris and I had when this whole thing began. We were sitting in a car that I had just purchased with money that I didn't really have because I was living a life I thought I deserved, but I really didn't. And you said, Kevin, you've got some things in your life you can leverage. Here's how I would leverage them if I were in your shoes. Well, Chris, I took you up on that advice because it resonated with me and it felt good. And as a result, I got my first property shortly thereafter. I had another property that I turned into a lease option almost immediately that you helped me do. And then I began to leverage partnerships in my life to go on to buy dozens of homes. But remember, I began 30 grand in debt and seemingly without any opportunities or possibilities. And you showed those to me. Thanks, Kevin. Now let's talk about the four different types of people. People are, are generally on four different paths 
when it comes to achieving wealth through the straight path system. And you know what? All of which can be considered with four general solutions. The main difference between them is the speed at which people can become wealthy through investing in real estate. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of my heart. I'm going to drop into my head and I'm going to get just mechanical here so that you can ask yourself, which one of these four buckets am I in? And then what's my next step? What can I do? The first path is called preparing for the journey. Steven, can we get your voice on that? <clears throat> The person on path number one has bad credit, no credit, or not enough credit to secure traditional financing, and either doesn't have a job or hasn't established a two-year work history within one industry. People who have filed bankruptcy and young adults often fit this category. I personally had to wait 14 months from the time I knew I wanted to invest in real estate to when I was able to buy my first home. At that time, I lacked two years of work history, so I conclusive, uh, so I consciously worked toward it. Oh, that's weird. It's like I wrote this book or something. I hear myself repeating myself. <laughs> okay, so steps to get on the path here. For people on path number one, if this describes you, then your primarily goal is to get qualified for getting some traditional financing because 10 years later, that can turn into a pile of homes. Number one, establish a healthy credit score so that it can be leveraged to buy real estate. Number two, establish a two-year work history within one industry. Number three, save money for down payments. On a, on a primary residence, it's usually a couple of percent, really small. And number four, while working on loan qualification, you can implement creative real estate to begin investing immediately. Jordan Ayer, he's working in our department right now. He's relatively new. He doesn't have any ability one could say to buy real estate or anything. And yet, because he's been persistent, Kevin, and I know you've been working with him and he's following this plan, he's working on getting a property under contract right now with over $70,000 of equity, cash flowing. How much is it a month? He'll be cash flowing about six to seven hundred dollars a month. And he just informed me today he has his partner secured and they are putting an offer on the home with sixty thousand dollars of equity. In and it. this is the same kid that came to me uh, like three months ago saying, oh, man, I wish we could do something, but we can't do something. I wish we could do something. And here he is. Now he's getting his first property way ahead of schedule. The fifth thing I, I encourage people to do is upon qualifying for, tr for traditional financing is building a property portfolio. Keep leveraging your credit, your income and assets to buy more properties. Understand that with the straight path investing system that you only need to get started with the one home to ultimately lead to more. Now, I've created a free download called How to Execute Creative Real Estate Investing, which you can find at www.straightpathrealestate.com. And remember that straight spelled S-T-R-A-I-T, straightpathrealestate.com to learn about creative financing and what Jordan did. Justin's another one of our investors who's enjoyed tremendous success on this path. At 21 years old, he had no credit, no capital, no experience with real estate investing, no intention of doing it. And he was studying um, for a business degree in college. And after accepting a position as a personal research assistant within our company, he learned all about the system, grew excited about all the possibility, and his parents were a perfect fit for the system. He began teaching them with the hope of partnering with them. And not only were they extremely skeptical, but they had no time for real estate investing. His father owns a public relations firm and his mother is a full-time CPA. But fortunately, he was able to convince them to attend a seminar. I'm going to tell you right here, what is the definition of an investor? Someone who knows how to get something done that others don't. Persistence, guys. Be that go-getter. Uh, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. They were both surprised and impressed that they could find no holes in the system. And after researching Straight Path thoroughly, they signed up for the program. Justin had his partnership. He had time, but no capital. His parents had no time, but lots of capital. And using his parents' money and credit, Justin did all the, all the legwork to secure two investment properties and found tenants for them. The first home was purchased with 21% discount, $64,000 of equity. They received $7,000 down from the tenant, cash flowing 50 a month. The second home was purchased at a 27% discount, $80,000 of equity, got $3,000 up front, and cash flows $300 a month. And if you take that three and that $7,000 down payment, that's a total of 10 grand. And if you divide that on a 24 month contract, you're looking at an extra 400 a month. So the cash flow is not 350. It's now $750 a month. Now, 23 years old, Justin continues to prove his, improve his ability to invest personally. And while currently focusing on sandwiching finance deals, he's also establishing a work and credit history. When he and his parents sell their two homes and cash out, he can take his portion of the earnings and use it as capital 
on his own investments. So the key to path number one? Preparation is the key to this first path. The better qualified an individual is for traditional financing, the more properties he or she can buy, and thus the faster he or she can build momentum and wealth. You know, Chris, we, we're talking about partnering, and I want everybody listening to understand that if you're young, it's a great option, but you know what? If you've already done a lot of real estate, it's a great option. We have a number of mature and well-established clients that have purchased multiple homes and then leverage partnerships, maybe with their parents that are in their twilight years, and partner with them to go do great and phenomenal things, all the while maintaining and doing their own real estate as well. Yeah, I, I'm st- I still yet want to meet someone that actually convinces me they can't succeed because you've heard it. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. It might be worth trying on a new belief that you actually can. Let's talk about path number two of the four. This is called heading towards the on-ramp. The person on path number two has good credit and has, has an established job and work history, but has no other tangible assets to speak of, including a home. Young renters are often found in this category. Stephen, steps to getting on the path. For people on path number two, the primary goal is to purchase either a personal residence or an investment property. Their path is the following. Number one, save enough money for a down payment. Number two, buy a home, either to live in or as an immediate investment. In either case, the purchase should be done or or should be a discounted property. Number three, as soon as possible, refinance or get a home equity line of credit. HELOC on the first property and use the cash to buy another property. And number four, keep repeating this process to build a large portfolio. Yeah, that'll always be the final step. Keep on building. You know, Ben's one of our investors who started on path number two at the age of 25. After graduating from college, you know, he had a decent uh, decent job, had decent credit, but he was renting and had no other real assets. After he learned our system, he realized that his credit and job history were hidden assets that could be wisely leveraged. While his peers and colleagues were all um, you know, stuck in the rental trap, he gained an entirely new perspective and was thinking in ways he hadn't before. He saved up some money and then found and purchased an excellent home with a mother-in-law apartment with a sales price of 170 grand and a market value of 220. That's $50,000 of equity, a 23% equity position. And you know what, since Ben was single, he rented out the mother-in-law apartment as well as three other rooms in the house collecting a total of 1,500 a month and his mortgage was 1,550. So essentially he was living for free or paying 50 bucks a month and he increased his net worth by... $50,000. Furthermore, since purchasing the home, he had made improvements and it had been rezoned into a duplex, which increased the value to $230,000. Now, about six months after the rezoning, Ben got married and he and his wife wanted their own home. So they secured a home equity line of credit on the first home, just like we talked about. And then they used that as a down payment on the second home. With the purchase price of $230,000 and a market value of $280,000, that bumped up his net worth another $50,000. And this home also had a mother-in-law apartment that was paying $750 a month. Ben and his wife later refinanced the mortgage on their first property. They recently secured a tenant for the home, receiving $3,000 down, $1,500 a month, and a positive cash flow of $500. Ben is now 28 years old, and he and his wife have a child. They're ecstatic about how much they've been able to accomplish at such a young age. They are working on buying their third investment, which will hopefully close this year. Now, to put this in context, when Ben first started on the straight path system, he was earning $13 an hour at his day job. At that rate, the $1,250 he earned monthly from his two properties is the equivalent to working an additional almost 100 hours a month. So question, it, 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 Ben is not working that extra 100 hours a month. Who is? His real estate. The key to path number two Purchasing their first discounted property is the key for individuals on this path, with the ultimate goal of leveraging their equity into more properties. Okay, so now let's go on to path number three. We've talked about path one, two. Number three is called accelerating. Now, some people get started on this path, and the path for the person on number three is that person that has established credit, job history, a solid income, and even maybe a home with some equity in it. Steps to getting on the path are first, extract home equity through a refinance or home equity line, and then purchase a, and purchase a first investment property at a discount. Step two, as soon as possible, do the same thing with the investment property, extract and leverage the equity into another investment. And number three, just repeat the process over and over and over again. 
Now, Amanda and Aaron, they're a couple in my REIC program, and they've recently started on this path. Amanda is a highly successful and popular radio personality, author, and speaker, and Aaron's a stay-at-home father. Amanda was realizing that despite her great income, she would never be able to provide for her family like she wanted through her labor alone. She knew she needed to find a dependable source of passive income in order to leverage herself. In fact, she had been looking for opportunities for a couple of years prior to meeting me. Now, after I first met with Amanda and Aaron, they read through and discussed our materials and and manuals. And after another personal meeting, they were ready to move forward. They appreciated how, oh, what's that big word? Commonsensical. Our system is and how simple it is for anyone to follow. They loved how it helped people who are unable to get approved for traditional financing. Now, the concept in identifying and leveraging hidden assets resonated really powerfully with them, but in their case, this included their their income, their credit scores, and home equity. Furthermore, they recognized how their portfolio could grow exponentially as they stuck with the system over time. So as I mapped out their 10-year portfolio game plan, they began to feel super excited about the new possibilities that, you know what, they didn't even know they had. Now, our first step was to refinance their home. We pulled out $45,000 of equity. That left 20% equity still in the home. I like that margin of safety. And the equity was used to purchase their first investment. It had an 18% equity position and it increased their net worth immediately by 47 grand. Now they received $7,000 up front plus the first three months of rent and had a positive cash flow. $520 a month. In fact, do you guys remember Amanda got so excited about this that she was on the radio and talking about this and it's been a whole lot of fun working with them. Yeah, she's loved the system. So now they're poised and looking forward to repeating the process over time. And you know what? When their tenants purchase that first investment home, they're going to use the cash to purchase at least two more homes, probably within the first couple of years. The key to path number three, leveraging existing equity is the key to this path. Home equity is hidden, dead asset unless it is put to use. Even if a person's goal is to pay off his or her home, which I recommend, he or she can achieve this goal more quickly by purchasing more real estate. Awesome. Okay, guys, we're going to get on the fourth path here. It's called cruising speed. And the person on path number four, they've got all these things that the previous people have. They've got a great credit score. They've got great income. They've got good job history. They've got a personal at residence. They've got some equity in it, plus other assets, including, but not limited to 401ks, IRAs, annuities, permanent life insurance policies, mutual funds, other liquid investments or business. These people have been conservative and safe, and they've put quite a bit of money together And the question is, crap, now that I've accumulated a bunch and not enough for retirement, how do I actually leverage that to create a passive income? Because remember, I'm going to hit it again. Poor people work for money and rich people get their money to work for them. Okay. Now steps to getting on this path. Number one, leverage all equity and assets to purchase as many investment homes as possible. And number two, Repeat Repeat, the process. Repeat the process. Now, Matt, my father-in-law, whom I mentioned earlier, he's a textbook case. So I'll just share this real quick. He was a part owner and a salesman for a highly successful consulting firm. He had accumulated almost a million dollars, which was derived from money market accounts, mutual funds, 401ks, IRAs. And you know, these funds weren't doing a whole lot for him. In fact, they sat for the most part completely stagnant over the 10 years that he had been accumulating them. Now, although he had a number of negative experiences with real estate in the past, After seeing this system succeed over and over again and learning more about what I was doing, he came around to the idea of actually partnering with me. Because by the way, I prepared my assets to buy my first home. Then I bought a second and a third and a fourth. And my fifth home was bought with Matt. And he was the first of many partners for me. Now, after buying a number of homes, I was looking myself for partners. See, that's great. I go off the script. And then when I get back to the script, I've repeated myself. It's like I wrote this or something. Uh, later he refi- later we refinanced the home to roll cash into another home. I skipped down and said that part. Uh, okay, here we go. Matt was leveraging his credit and job history and transferred $800,000 of underperforming assets into straight path real estate. And as a result, his net worth skyrocketed by $1.567 million. And that's all happened since 2005 with a monthly cash flow of over $8,377. So the key to path number four... Building and maintaining momentum is the key to path number four. The huge advantage of this path is the ease of starting. So much time and effort is eliminated at this phase. So let's review these four keys. And then Kevin, I want, I want to get some feedback from you because you're the one 
that is actively meeting with people on a regular basis with me and creating people's game plans. To, to remind, each, remind everyone of the four paths, we've got prepare, Believe it or not, real estate investors got to be able to purchase properties. So the first and most important step is to establish your ability to do so. Get plugged into the system. The second one is purchase. And with that step, you can start purchasing properties to generate cash flow, residual income, but more importantly, building equity that can be leveraged to buy more deals. The third one is leverage. The more properties one is able to buy, the more equity one accrues the more able one is then to leverage those assets to purchase more. And the fourth and final step, momentum. And at this stage, an investor simply has to duplicate the process to achieve critical mass, create exponential growth that I'm gonna discuss later in chapter eight. Now, the point I wanna drive home here is this, everyone can become a real estate investor. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. And that desire has to start with you. Everyone can participate in the system. And the question really isn't whether you can or can't. The only question is how long is it going to take based on your circumstances? Because you know what? If you've got to take a year or 18 months to climb out of the hole to buy your first home, then so be it. That is still part of building. And through partnering, you can still get into real estate way sooner like our friend Jordan. The purpose of having a portfolio game plan It's to identify all your assets and then design an achievable 10-year game plan. Determine what you want to achieve, how much cash flow you need to make it happen, and then create a plan to leverage your existing assets and resources to achieve your goals. Such a structure helps you keep your eye on the prize. Now, with the advice I've given you in this chapter, you can see how to take your steps depending on which bucket you put yourself in so you can take your next steps. At the same time, If you'd actually like to work with our team and our experts, we may actually be able to show you some options that you weren't able to see. Straight path sign number two. Develop discipline in your investing by creating a 10-year portfolio game plan. Identify current resources and assets and a desired goal, and then create a specific step-by-step plan for achieving that goal. Having this goal in place will help you delay gratification. Now, to calculate what you want to make in the next 10 years, I've put this really cool calculator. You guys remember this? Oh, yeah. It's awesome. So this calculator we've put together, it's at www.straightpathrealestate.com. And this simple calculator will actually show you that if you don't change anything, this is what you'll make on your own. But if you actually reassign those assets to the Straight Path system, this is what we can show you how to do. And ultimately, that's really about getting on this path, like Kevin, with you and your 25 homes, how to achieve critical mass through endurance. You see your 10-year game plan, it's the destination. Your passion behind the goal, however, fuels your efforts to get on the path. Ultimately, it's the vehicle of repetition that gets you to the goal. Got it? Straight path real estate is not a get rich quick scheme. It's not designed for people who lack discipline and persistence, and it doesn't provide quick fixes. What it does provide, unlikely, um, What it does provide, unlikely risky schemes or traditional retirement products and strategies is a safe and sure route to a stable retirement. I'm sure I didn't get the, the, I'm sure I didn't. Something like that. Uh, Anyway, we'll keep going. However, if you step off the path prematurely, you won't reach your destination. Underlying the system is the fundamental key of repetition. You've got to duplicate the process over and over again to enjoy the long-term results. Purchase discounted properties, finance them to tenants through compassionate financing, sell them as tenants, become credit worthy, and then roll the cash into the next deal again and again and again. Straight past sign number three. Delay gratification by reinvesting your profits, especially in the early years, then endure to the end by repeating the investing process over and over until you achieve your goal. So Kevin, let's come to you here as we kind of wrap this chapter up. When you're sitting down and when you're creating game plans for people, I think this is when the spark really hits. Because if you look at it, most people that are struggling financially, it's because they don't have a plan. They don't know where they're going in life. And I know you put that plan in place for people. Talk about that. What's so powerful is someone can sit in front of me feeling like they have no options, but they've got all these options in the world. And then as we share the options with them, you see them light up with potential impossibility. You know, just to kind of reiterate these phases, look, I could tell you about Tony, who I sat down with. And Tony, he didn't even have a stable job. He needed to work on his credit. He needed to get it repaired. He needed to establish it. He worked for a year and a half. 
He got a stable job that created some good income. He worked on repairing his credit. And then he and his wife were able to buy their first property that they moved into. Short time after that, he was able to partner with his parents. And now they went and bought their first investment property with his parents. You know, you could talk about Jordan, who we already talked about, who's purchasing his first home, or Ben, or me, or somebody who just doesn't even realize they can qualify to purchase their own home today. It's very possible. Maybe they have the credit. Maybe they have the job, but they just don't know where to start. They get into a property with equity. Maybe it has a mother-in-law basement, like how it worked for me and how it worked for Ben, how it may work for Jordan. And then you start to create cash flow immediately in your life just because you went and took the first step and purchased. You know, you look at leverage, you take somebody like our good friends, Mike and Tracy, who, who'd been working for years and years and had all the money in the 401k. Uh, they were only a year away from retirement when, they, when we got to them. Year away from retirement and they were freaking out because they knew it wasn't going to be enough. See, they had their home paid off. They had money in 401ks and, and in IRAs, but they realized that something new needed to be done. They needed to make a shift. So Chris, you know, we took those assets that were not working for them and we helped them get into real estate immediately with a huge increase in net worth within a matter of months. And now they're cruising. I had a chance to sit down with them just a week ago and say, what's our next step? And you know what? They are more excited than ever because of what we're helping them create. And you know, you take a look at, at the ability to just accelerate your game plan, repetition, doing it over and over again, enduring to the end. Chris, if I would have stopped after the one home that you helped me buy, I would not be the man that I am today, having created the results I've created, being worth millions of dollars, and being able to create financial security for me and for my family. I repeated the process. I'm enduring and continuing to do that, and I have seen phenomenal results in my life. But I just had to get started, and you helped me do that. Investing is a means to an end. As Lewis Carroll wrote, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Without a portfolio game plan, real estate investing is like throwing stuff up against the wall to see what sticks. It's far more effective to begin with the end in mind by creating a precise, customized, and achievable plan that considers your existing resources and abilities.